Thank you. All right, wonderful. And Jennifer, is Pamela joining us today? I do not think so. Okay. We're trying to alternate the yeah. meetings. It makes sense. <laughs> There's a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me just check in quickly uh, and then I'll just go ahead and start the meeting, but I'm just going to check in with Alexis and Dr. Shabazz. Um, and let's see. I know Yvonne is unable to be here for sure today. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to call the meeting to order here. Let me just pull up my agenda. Calling to order the October 24th meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly at 2.02 p.m. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And now I'm just going to, I'm going to do a sound check for everyone who is here. And I will start with you, Dr. Rhodes. I'm here and I can see and hear everyone. Excellent. And Ms. Bridges? Oh. Can you hear Mine us? just went off. Oh, it did, okay. yeah. It <laughs> just, every once in a while, I'll click off and I have to put the, get back in there. Just, <laughs> just black screen and I gotta go back in. But I hear you. You hear okay. me? I hear you. Sure. We hear you. Yeah. And Hala. <laughs> I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, very clearly. Great. Excellent. Okay. Um, I do see we have one attendee. So I'm going to call our first um, public comment period um, just to see if that individual would like to speak. And then we'll also call a second public comment um, toward the end of our meeting. So reading the statement during the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public when called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, pronouns and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. The AHRA will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. However, we will be listening very closely. So if you would like to make a comment at this time, um, please go ahead and use the raise hand feature and we will bring you into the room. Okay, so let's see here. Um, I think what I would like to do first, I just um, want to take a moment um, before we move into the agenda um, and recognize that this has been a challenging week for the Amherst community um, and for members of the Amherst community. Um, and maybe not everybody is paying attention to, you know, what's happening, um, but I think that a fair amount of residents are. And so I really just want to acknowledge and recognize um, that it has been a very challenging week for, for many. Um, and that we are here doing this wonderful work together of um, healing and repair. And so um, just really grateful to be in this committee and working with all of you. 
<laughs> um, and also just want to leave a, a minute or a, a, any a space for any members if they, uh, we will get into the particulars um, of the July 5th uh, agenda item in a little bit. Um, but for right now, if there's anything that anyone would like to say, um, just leaving a moment of space for that. All right. <laughs> that wasn't quite a moment. <laughs> that wasn't very long. <laughs> However, um, please raise your hand at any point if, of course, if there's anything. Um, so I think we're going to start by finalizing the details of our upcoming listening session. Um, so I wanted to first um, let you all know that Dr. Shabazz and I had a chance to meet um, with folks at the Hitchcock Center last week and to be in the space to look at what the technology is in there, um, consider how we might set up the room depending on um, how many folks attend. Uh, and so that was a really, really great meeting. They have some awesome technology in there. They have two huge projection screens that we're going to make use of. Um, great audio throughout. Um, they've got all of the chairs and tables and everything that we need. So it's really well equipped for us to have this session. Uh, we also talked about creating a little space right out side of the indoor space, um, sort of like a piece corner um, outside in case uh, participants need to step out, have a moment. Um, there will be some Adirondack chairs um, and we'll, we'll set that up nicely for folks. Um, so, oh, and Dr. Shabazz is in the audience and I'm a, I can do this, huh, Jennifer? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> All right. There we go. Welcome, Dr. Shabazz. Greetings, everyone. Great, we can hear you. Good. Uh, welcome. Um, we started with just a, a, a few seconds of recognition about the challenging week that we are having as a community. And um, now we're talking about the meeting that you and I had at the Hitchcock Center. Um, so I did get a chance to speak with um, the student senators at Amherst College who have offered to come early to help set up chairs, refreshment table, entrance table, um, and also to volunteer um, helping with parking so that when, or actually helping if folks are coming off of the bus so that there are people down at the bottom of the driveway that will guide people either up if they've come from the bus or to show them where to park. Um, so I would request that are all, is everyone that's here today going to be at the listening session? Yes. Great. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. So. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, and so we will, um, if we can plan to be there, I'll be there probably about 530. We start at 630. So if you all can get there, maybe around six, that would be good. But if you, if you, it's okay, if you don't get there that early too, we'll have it covered. Um, and so there were some logistics that I would like to go over, particularly about the program. Um, first, I'll mention that I have asked three people to record short video messages. Um, the first being older woman, former older woman, Robin Rue Simmons, who led the first ever local reparations effort in the country in Evanston, Illinois. And she is going to provide a message to the participants. Um, I've also asked Rep. Mindy Dom, who is unable to be there with us, um, to record a short message, as well as our town council president, Lynn Reismer, um, who is hoping to be there, but won't be there in the beginning. So um, a short message from her as well. Um, so 
Dr. Shabazz created some really excellent, uh, an excellent slide for us in terms of our agenda. And then in the meantime, since we've last met, I came across, I had actually come across it a long time ago, um, but Evanston put together a really excellent facilitation uh, guide for listening sessions that they have used very successfully. And so I thought that we could go through the guide together. Um, there were a couple questions that I wanted to ask if you would like to use certain aspects of what's in there. Um, some other questions include how we want to acknowledge indigenous um, and that this is a start of our work um, in, in the community um, reparations for our black residents, but do we want to acknowledge that? Um, coming back again to the media uh, question, and uh, I think Dr. Shabazz had an excellent suggestion for that, so he can share that. Um, so let me share my screen here, and I'll just pause quickly, see if there's any any just general questions right now. All right, so let me pull this up here. Can everyone see the screen? Yes, it's not just like a black screen because I had oh. trouble sharing. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Great. All right, so um, again, we I hope to use this as a model for us. Um, and so I'm just gonna start. Um, in the beginning here, there's there's some facilitator tips. I will be sending this whole packet out. To, I'll give it. I'll send it to Jennifer and to everyone um, to have. You may want to print it out. It's um, it can be opened up as a Google Doc. So however you want to have it for yourself. Um, so I would suggest reviewing these facilitator tips. But I'm going to move down here. Um, So we're gonna start off with some opening comments about open meeting law, what you know can and can't happen in the meeting, um, particularly if there are town council members, uh, which there, there will be, I'm expecting town council and other committee members. Um, and so we'll talk a little like housekeeping stuff, I guess I would call it, you know, initially. Um, and then we will give an overview and we need to make assignments about who would like to do each of these um, pieces. I want to be really clear that some people like public speaking or are comfortable, others are not. And so there's no pressure one way or another, we'll get it covered. Um, so we'll give a timeline of our process um, and things uh, that are sort of, we've already outlined with Dr. Shabazz's agenda, but the questions I wanted to ask for you are, this facilitation guide recommends that we provide two things to all participants that arrive um, and uh, once they've signed in. Um, the first is called, and I'm gonna just scroll down to it here. It's called We Agree. Um, this is a community guidelines. It's very simple. Um, so if you want to just take a moment to look at that. Just give me a thumbs up when you've had a chance to look at that. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Sure. How, please. Uh, when I think about what uh, Dr. Shabazz has in relationship to ropes, so how does this tie into that? And when when will both of them? When will they be given to, or participants um, have access to these two documents? 
I think that's a really excellent question. And I actually, I think this is another version of ropes. And since we use ropes, we may want to use ropes at our listening session. And that's a decision for the committee to make. Um, this or ropes would be given right as the participant comes in, they sign in if they choose to sign in, and then they'll be handed uh, this document or ropes. And then um, this one here, which is called an invitation to brave space. Um, and I don't know if somebody feels like they would maybe want to read this out loud. Anyone feel like, Hala, would you read it out loud? Right now or at the listening session? Both, maybe. <laughs> right now, if you feel up to it, and uh, also there. <laughs> sure, it is little font. What, yeah, we'll see what my 40, 40 plus eyes can do. Okay. <laughs> An invitation to brave space. Together we will create brave space because there is no such thing as a safe space. We exist in the real world. We all carry scars and we have all caused wounds. In this space, we seek to turn down the volume of the outside world. We amplify voices that fight to be heard elsewhere. We call each other to more truth and love. We have the right to start somewhere and to continue to grow. And clearly my cat wants to contribute. We have the responsibility to examine what we think we know. We will not be perfect. The space will not be perfect. It will not always be what we wish it is to be or what we wish it to be. But it will be our brave space together and we will work on it side by side by Mickey Scott B. Jones. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Hala. Um, so I'm going to take this share down because I'd like to get your feedback on both of these sort of foundational um, sort of a way for us to set the, the, the evening up for folks. Um, I think Jennifer may have agreed to play the singing bowls, um, but we'll make sure <laughs> that that's, uh, which I think would be really beautiful. Um, so first to Irv's question, do we want to use um, our ropes or that shorter guidelines? Is there a preference? Also, uh, the uh, document that was shared with us last week in relationship to Dr. Chavez in terms of framing the meeting. I yeah. thought that ropes was one part of that. Yes, indeed. All right. Um, so that's, you know, so the first question is if we're gonna use that framework, then ropes is already in there. If we're not gonna, if we are also, if ropes is in there, we wanna, we want to insert this document in there, then that, that would be something we need to discuss. The other thing is I think we, need to make a, a conscious decision <laughs> at some point during this meeting as to how long we wish for this evening to be. Yeah, yeah. So we are, um, we have advertised 6.30 to eight. Jennifer has listed it uh, as a posting. Um, did you do 6.30 to eight, Jennifer, or 6.30 to 8.30? No, I did 6.30 to, I just did 6.30. Oh, I didn't perfect. put an end time because. <laughs> um, I think that was, that was good. Um, yeah, I think, um, Irv, it's, it's likely that we will not be finished within an hour and a half, but I think given that we're in the Hitchcock Center space and they're staffing it for us, we'll want to finish up by 8.30 would be my, would be my feeling on that. Um, unless uh, we have. If, if somebody has a different idea. Yeah, usually, usually they are up, up there at the Hitchcock, if they are staffing it, mm -hmm. and these are not voluntary staff, uh, there is a hard time that they gotta be out of there. Yeah, so the person who's staffing it is my best friend in the whole world. Um, and so she is super flexible. She'll stay there all night if that's what we want. Um, but there will be at least one other person, Casey, who will be there helping with technology and things. So I think they're very open and flexible, but 
we definitely want to be respectful of not to stay too late. Um, so do we, can we just do a quick, like, not like a formal vote, but do we want to use ropes or do we want to use, um, we agree for this particular, um, meeting? So if you want to use, we agree, raise your hand. You don't care, Ms. Bridges? <laughs> Is that what you're going to say? Um, I don't mean to sound like I'm not uh, ropes. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know what? That is I'm, um, I'm new here, so yes, you <laughs> are. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, no. You are okay. absolutely right. Um, let me see if we can easily pull that up. I think it's. I'm sorry. You could also say that we agree isn't um detailed. I don't want to say detailed. But it's not expanded enough. Like I feel like it needs to be expanded on a little bit more. Yeah. So that ropes probably would be the best. Okay. So let that sounds great. I'm gonna pull up for Ms. Bridges um a packet here. I think ropes is in um or early packet materials at least. Yep. All right. Hang on. <laughs> here we go. Right, if it's just if you want, you can just send it to me. There we go. Do you see it? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is what we um, adopted. Ms. Oh, Bridges. I see. I see. I see. Um, and we refer back to it when needed. We really haven't. It's it's something that's sort of just become part of our <laughs> our part of us, I guess. Um, so. Let me see if I need to scroll down a little bit. No, I think I got got it all. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna just you could take like a picture of it if you want. That's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> um. So in this case, um, ooh, did you get? Oh, okay. I'm gonna wait. Got it. Got it. All right. Great. Yeah, I can also you. send. I'll send it to you. Thank um, you. Got it. And do we like the the poem, the brave space poem? If if anybody's opposed to that, raise your hand. Okay, so I will make um, copies of the ropes and the brave space. Um, if somebody, uh, again, we need to kind of figure out who's going to do what. I will open, I guess, to talk about the open meeting law um, and sort of just set the housekeeping pieces in place. Um, I could review the ropes unless somebody else feels like they would like to take that piece. Um, and again, what we can do is sort of talk about all the pieces and then you can email me if you want and say that you'd like to do this or that, and I'll put together a schedule. Yes, Dr. Spaz. I am um, just, this is just occurring to me now, but um, in previous uh, public comments or even in previous listening sessions of town bodies that I've attended or been a part of, um, often the approach or the one guy aspect of the guidelines is that um, we as the, the listening body, AHRA members, are not really going to engage, don't gauge, engage in a dialogue with community members who come out. I've seen this oftentimes uh, relaxed a bit or fudged, or sometimes the chair may take the chair's prerogative to, to, um, uh, to interact directly with uh, an audience member in a listening session, or they may designate uh, a member of the body to perhaps respond if they want. But I don't know what, our, what the sense is of our approach. Are we really primarily there in a listening mode? If people came and they had very direct questions, they they wanted answered on the spot. Are we not 
are we holding that and saying, let us get back to you or, or are we, are we talking back? So is what really. That's an excellent question. And um, it does lead us back to these facilitation guidelines. Um, the way that uh, the Evanston facilitation guide works is that there are prompting questions um, starting with defining reparations. Let me just um, share screen. Okay. So questions for discussion, um, again, beginning with defining reparations and giving some overview of that and then asking why do we need reparations? What does reparations mean to you? How would you like to be involved? Um, and reflections on what stands out about the definition. How does it fit with what was discussed? How does Amherst reparations fit into this? It also talks about target areas. And Dr. Shabazz, you have brought the five injury areas as a potential framework for that, I think. Um, but overall, it seems to me that we may have some overview of reparations, some of these prompting questions, and then as discussed last week, step back into listening mode and really allow for the flow to move through um, the audience of, of participants and setting some clear guidelines about two to three minutes. Um, and then, of course, centering our participants uh, that are Black and of African heritage. Um, and we can't assume to know how anybody identifies. Um, so I think we have to be very clear up front that we are centering those voices. And um, have some level of confidence that folks who do not identify that way will also step back. Yes, Dr. Rhodes. So I'm 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 struggling to, uh, because um, at this point my mind is saying we got to get organized here so I can think about how this is going to flow. So the the big question for me is all right, how are we going to structure this particular document uh, talks about uh, it enables, enables us to look at and ask questions or questions to think about. Not necessarily have to be uh, talked about, but for the audience to think about. Yes. That's one. Two, when you say centered on African Americans, mm -hmm. you know, um, does that mean that any person who is not African American cannot participate? And, and because if you say centered, mm -hmm. what, uh, that's automatically going to be saying to other people and other audience who are not African American that you are not allowed to participate. And I don't think that's what we mean. And if if that's what we mean, then we need to talk about that. So, do other folks perceive um, that language of centering Black and African heritage folks as meaning that uh, others should not participate? No? Okay. Um, so, I want to get sort of to the heart of what you're um, perceiving, Dr. Rhodes, and maybe you have some other language. That's the language that I've been using. Um, to indicate that we'll be focusing on those voices um, first and foremost, but that this is a, this, you know, I'll very clearly state from the beginning that this is a community dialogue that's open to all. Does anybody have a suggestion for how we might, like I've been in meetings where the facilitator directly asks for a particular group to speak first and then um, asks the others to yield uh, until that phase has occurred. Um, but I'd be curious if there are any ideas about how we might want to set that framework up. 
without really knowing who's going to show up. <laughs> yes, Dr. Shabazz. Well, so to my original question, you know, I do have in my mind that this is very much like, um, you know, if the zoning board or the planning board or whatever had a hearing and, you know, then, it, and, and that it, one, number one, is completely open to the public. I think, number two, what we've said before, and I would emphasize again in terms of just thinking about the flow, that in order to hear from a maximum number of voices, we ask people to be time conscious and that, like, going beyond three minutes, we might find a way to make a gentle nudge. Um, particularly if if the person has kind of made made the point they want to make, uh, or you know, to everybody's ears in the room, they've made the point um, that we might kind of gently nudge them to wrap it up. But um, the but it is open to all. Uh, I don't know that we need to say there's a focus or a centering in the meeting of any you know of any voices. The, the process is, is that the plan and the structure we're, we're looking to recommend is one that will listen to the community who've experienced the harm for what gets addressed. But what we will talk about or what we, you know, people may want to bring to the table for us to listen to, I think that should just be a level level play field. Let anyone speak out, let anyone give their input, and we listen. So, um, but if we need to say something about how this ultimate plan is, is going to be produced and what how we expect it to operate, we can certainly speak to that. Finally, I just would note, um, you might have mentioned it before I got on, but in this room, there are two large uh, screens with an LCD projector that can project onto the screen. It is on both sides of the room. So, you know, through these two screens, anyone sitting anywhere in the semicircle of the, of the room will be able to see. I think we ought to use these to convey uh, some of the things we want to convey without having to read them and, and speak them and, and so much, but we can just have it up there. Um, the other thing that I do like in the Evanston guideline um, is where it mentions the timeline. And so in the initial slide that I made last week that I'm emphasizing, I feel that our work emanates from the sanction we have, not only our charge, but the commitment to end structural racism resolution that was passed December 2020. And I see they took a snippet out of their commitment to end statement and, and have it in the guideline. If we could take maybe a similar relevant phrase from our uh, commitment to end structural racism and have that flashed up on the screen, on the screens in the room, that could go a long way toward establishing who we are, what we're here for, and you know what is the sanction and the charge um, of of our work, and and then it's really from there to listen. I don't know some of these other questions. If we just want to have them flash up there, what is reparations or or what have you? But to me, it is really to create the widest opportunity for uh, residents to come out. Share their points of share their views on what we're doing, and we're we're more or less there in, in note taking mode. I think if there maybe is a real direct question that we can try to answer or speak to, then the chair through the chair or the chair asking any of us to speak to it, we can then answer briefly. But that um, we're really you know primarily there in listening mode is how I would how, how I'm seeing it in my head. That is, yes, all sounds just perfect. <laughs> very wise. Um, and uh, yeah, I very much agree with that. Um, Dr. Rhodes. Yeah, uh, Dr. Shabazz, it's an excellent idea to have 
uh, these things that we're talking about up on the two screens, uh, i.e., you know, you know, the ropes, uh, the uh, questions, possible questions, ropes, possible questions, and um, any other significant thing that we uh, want to focus on. But those, but those two at least, there's another, there's another one I can't remember, but they should be prominently put on the screen. That then takes out a lot of time of us talking about it or going over it. We can just refer them to the screen. And that's an effective way of, of having people uh, be engaged and know what they're gonna be engaged with because it's right there before them without us talking about it. And that saves a lot of time. And one of the things I am concerned about is not having this thing go ad infinitum through the evening. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I think, um, Dr. Rhodes, you may have been referring that third thing is this commit, the thing that I have um, highlighted up here from the commitment to end structural racism and achieve racial equity. Yeah, that's um, our, our charge. Exactly. Our charge. So, okay. So what I, I have two laptops, so I will be able to get things on both screens. Um, I will have my, I will have Kim who will be there. Um, I'll be meeting with her earlier on and make sure that she can help us move through the slides or have whichever slides we want up when we want them. Um, I also had planned um, to have some music going when people arrive. Um, and was working on a playlist. Um, if anybody has a song or songs that they would like to have on that playlist, please send that. That's really just for like the first five to 10 minutes as people are arriving. Um, so what I will do is I will create a flow based on everything that we talked about and I will send it out to the group if you have some particular suggestions, please just respond only to me and Jennifer. Um, and, and, and then we'll send that out to everybody with assignments and things like that. Um, yes, Dr. Rhodes. Uh, just to be clear, I think we covered this, but I want to make sure it's clear in my mind. Sure. Is that when this meeting opens up on Thursday, we, we open it up, we have to open it up as an AHR meeting because we're in a quorum. Yes, and, we've and, posted it. Right, good. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I thought you had finished. Was there more? No, I'm finished. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, I don't like when I can't see folks. Hold on, let me just, all right, there we go. Um, yeah, we've posted it as a meeting and, and so that covers us in, in terms of that, but you're absolutely right. We will have to call it to order just like we would um, a, an AHRA meeting. Um, the Dr. Shabazz, do you want to share the thought process you had about media? Because I'd like for this group to get on the same page about that, so I can send that email this afternoon. Um, so the idea is we're it's, we're likely to have. Uh, media come out. It might be a different variety, not just journalists with a notepad, but possibly even uh, uh, television stations with cameras. And uh, that being the case, what um, occurred to me is, is that we could ask AHRA members and uh, other town uh, officials and, and state reps or whomever else is attending to kind of be over in this, what I would call this, this green room area. Uh, we were show, they showed us there the, the space. It's uh, uh, away from the main door, to, kind of to the left. It's a nice lobby area that some of us could, could uh, uh, be parked there in the half hour to 15 minutes before the, the start time. And members of the media could be uh, um, informed that that is an opportunity if they wish to, uh, to speak with AHRA members uh, about the, where we are in our process, 
about the, the listening session, but that actually during the listening session, we would not like to have them coming and going with cameras, uh, particularly with video cameras or, or any equipment like that. Print journalists that are in a kind of more unobtrusive role, um, you know, if they can, if they're coming for, for the entire session or what have you, then, you know, they're welcome to sit and to, and to do that. Uh, but the only thing we ask is, is that in terms of any um, uh, information taken from the session, that um, if you are going to quote someone or use their words, please try to speak to them uh, at the end of the evening or, you know, if they leave early, try to follow and ask to speak to them and ask their permission. Uh, but that otherwise, you know, the words that are shared here are for each other in this in this space. So those are the those are the thoughts I had. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Yes, um, and Dr. Rhodes. Just to be clear, Dr. Shabazz, are you indicating that uh, news media who show up with cameras not be in the room? Yes, my uh, suggestion, my recommendation is, is that if they wanted to speak with people before the session got underway, this would be an opportunity for them to uh, to interview any of us about the purpose of the evening, about what's what's happening, but that yes, uh, we'd ask that uh, uh, they they not be there, uh, just coming in and and recording, and then le you know, and then and then leaving in the middle of 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 the evening. All right, so we're, we're, I'm trying to think if I were a person, a news media person, I show up with my camera crew. Uh, what I'm what am I what am I going to be told? Am I going to be told uh, that if, uh, if you are going to film, you must stay door, during the entire session and not tear down your stuff until, until the end of the meeting? Or and not to record at all. Uh, oh, sorry, that's what I'm trying to get clarified. You're, yeah. What you're saying is- If they is, want footage, and I think uh, our chair is about to send an advisory to the press to let them know in advance that if they, if they are covering the event and they want to come and get footage to come just before we start, members will be available to, to talk with them. And, uh, but that in the uh, setting of the hearing itself, we would rather cameras not be, not, not be set up and operating um, uh, from, from the press, from the media. Are we making an exception for Amherst Media for our own Alexis um, to be able to record audio for our, our purposes so that we have, okay. Um, and also for folks um, coming from the Indy or the Gazette or even um, a written NEPM, um, do we want to allow those folks to stay in as long as there's not a camera with the disclosure that you gave, Dr. Shabazz, which is that you should talk to? Okay. Uh, here's, is, is there any conflict with this being an open public meeting? And which what we're just saying, uh, because we are going to be calling our meeting to order as a public meeting. Yeah. And now, and then I, if I'm hearing people correctly, is that uh, media will not be able to record a public meeting. I mean, where, where are we, what are we saying here? And also the other thing is what, uh, is there gonna be any video recording of all, including from Amherst Media? I, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I don't know what kind of ground we're getting on here. We have an open public meeting and we're saying no, no, uh, no video cameras, et cetera. People, have, you know, public meetings or there are some public meetings such as courtrooms that says no cameras can be allowed. Uh, there are some uh, public bodies who meet councils, uh, et cetera, who say, uh, their policy is that there are no uh, cameras or media, but this is a hybrid. You know, we're talking about a hybrid here. We're talking about a public meeting in which the public has been invited, the public has been invited uh, 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 to make statements, to make, uh, to uh, comment, et cetera. And, and it's in one way, a person would be right to say, why, why, why is the media being censored? 
I mean, it's, it's a question that we need to talk about. You know, um, Dr. Rhodes, the town actually has very specific guidelines on this. So I will pull them up. Um, I know, for example, that um, I believe a member of the public is entitled to record in a public meeting on their own device, for example. Um, and so I think you're raising a really important point. And um, what, I'll, what, what we can do is encourage um, and, and ask people to be sensitive to what we're doing. I don't think we can require um, that that's what I would think on that. I, that makes me feel better because I would hate to see the news media publicly publishing a newspaper that they were being censored and not allowed to record. I, I would not want to want that to happen. Absolutely, absolutely. So we'll I'll I'll sort of lay out a framework um, in the in the note to media that um, is welcoming and also asks for some sensitivity to um, the, the con content matter of, of the listening session. Does that work for everyone? All right, great. Um, and I did like the invitation that Dr. Shabazz is setting up to come prior um, because some folks may want to get some like footage of people coming in or there's just different, I think you called it B-roll, Dr. Spots. <laughs> I don't know what that means really, but I have an idea. <laughs> um, so I've heard Alexis use that term before too. So <laughs> yep. yeah. Um, okay. So there was one other piece before we uh, move on from this. I'm going to once again, share screen here. All right, and I, I did mention this briefly in the beginning. So I noticed in the Evanston guide that they talk about um, indigenous people deserving reparations. Um, and if we would like to make any acknowledgement of um, our work being a start to more reparative work um, for harmed communities, if we want to acknowledge land, um, I know this has been a sort of controversial um, topic, at least from what I have heard. So if anybody has thoughts on this, I would really appreciate hearing um, what, and, and if you could just look at what they're suggesting here um, be mentioned at least. Dr. Rhodes. Oh, I see Hala and um Hala, I'm sorry, I, I just missed your hand. Um, why don't we start with you, Hala, and then we'll go to Dr. Rhodes. So I didn't do my electronic hand, but now I have. I think it's always imperative, important to acknowledge. Um, I still hold the fact that we're mostly performative and not really necessarily engaging in action steps that improves the lives and or might even begin to repair reparations for what the indigenous have sacrificed, not sacrificed, were forced to. Um, but I think to not do it is an erasure. So even if it's still kind of performative, though we hope to make steps forward, I think to not acknowledge that we're on this stolen land and that many have died and blood has been shed, especially in a town called Amherst, is um, is harmful, in my opinion. Thank you, Hala. And um, Ms. Bridges, and then I'll, uh, just because um, Dr. Rhodes, um, since Ms. Bridges hasn't had a chance to talk yet, please go ahead, Ms. Bridges. I agree with, <laughs> there has to be an acknowledgement for the indigenous people, there has to be. Uh, that's a no-brainer to me. That's a no-brainer. There has to be an acknowledgement. Where it goes from there, we can talk about, but there absolutely has to be an acknowledgement. I mean, I, I can't express that. I, I just have to fall back and, and it's like, <laughs> think about that. <laughs> 
but there's no there's no need to think about should there be an acknowledgement or not obviously they should okay and from here from then we just we got to what needs to be said about that we can keep talking about but we'll put an acknowledgement together you have to we just we just have to do that um, so Sorry. maybe, no, no, thank you so much. And, and um, maybe we can work on that together over the next couple of days. That would be lovely. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, Dr. Rhodes. Yeah, some, some, some statement that acknowledges that would be good. Uh, just to acknowledge it and because it's outside of our charge. And we are we are with our charge, but we can acknowledge it at a minimum. Excellent. Okay, great. So we are on the same page about that. Um, and Ms. Bridges, your hand is still up. Is it? Do you? Okay. <laughs> All right. So any other questions, comments, concerns about the upcoming listening session? I'll make one final request. Um, if you have social media and you feel comfortable sharing about the listening session, please do. Um, Dr. Shabazz put together a great post that I know has been shared, but feel free to take that one or make one of your own. Um, and yes, Jennifer. Did it go out to the schools? Yes. So last week we went through the list. Um, the schools have been so great. The PGOs have posted it on their social media, in their newsletters. Um, I have invited personally um, the principal of the high school who will be in attendance. Um, there are, I've put out a lot of invitations and put it into different communities. Um, Family Outreach of Amherst, ABC, uh, the Amherst Survival Center. Um, I have a whole list. <laughs> um, however, I would like to send, Jennifer, we talked about you sending a reminder out to the committees that that you liaison for. Um, so if I'll send you the, the postcard and the information, if you could do that. And you said you have a list yourself that you could send it out to. That would be fantastic. Um, and if anyone else has, I know Dr. Rhodes sent it out to a list of, of people. Um, so anybody that, um, wants, oh, and also should mention that Cyrus and some other senators went around, um, the farmer's market on Saturday and handed out postcards, um, and, and talked to people, um, so, but if there are any other ideas, again, we have the conflict of the spelling bee being on the same night, um, which is an unfortunate conflict, but I think we're both still going to have very successful turnouts. Um, yes, Dr. Rhodes. Did this get out to the BAM members through the BAM mailing list? Does anyone know? I am not sure, but I can make that happen tonight. Yeah, you know, Kathleen has that, so... If you could do that, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, I have it as well. So I will send that great. out tonight. Both of you, great. That would be awesome. And I'll also have, I also have a list of um, all the folks that have included their names in the portal. And so just to, I, I think that they probably already know about it, but just to send another reminder on that. All right, any other questions or comments about this before we move on? And I just want to do a time check. What time, I know Ms. Bridges, you have to, what time do you have to leave today? I think I can be here for another 15 minutes. Okay. Just phone call I absolutely have to take. All right. Um, anyone else have any limitations here on their time? Okay. So I think given that we do not have Yvonne and Alexis with us, Ms. Bridges has about 15 more minutes. Um, we definitely, I definitely want to talk about the agenda item of the July 5th um, police youth um, incident interaction. Um, we may not get 
to the eligibility uh, agenda item today. I think that's okay, given we're probably going to receive a lot of feedback at Thursday's session. Um, so let me just take a moment um, to sort of frame. Um, first, before I waste words, is everybody familiar with the incident that is referenced in the agenda? And has everybody somewhat been following um, the town council meeting and other uh, meetings of the CSSJC, perhaps, and the Human Rights Commission? Yeah. Okay. That's helpful. So um, on Monday at the town council meeting, um, there was a combined meeting of the town council and the community safety and social, social justice committee. Um, there was a time limited one hour discussion um, that was related to two sort of two to three focuses, I would say. The first being um, a police report that Chief Livingstone produced. The second being an addendum to a report that Pamela um, produced back um, in uh, September. And those were two discussion points. They were placed in the packet prior to the meeting. Um, and they were also made available to the CSSJC. Um, there was also the topic of a victim's compensation fund that was potentially to be discussed in that meeting. Um, we, if you've all probably read different versions of what occurred, um, we had a presentation by the chief, we had a presentation by the DEI director, um, and then we had a, a a lot of discussion um, and commentary um, from members of the CSSJC and the town council. Um, it, as I started the meeting off by saying, this has been a very challenging week um, for many in the community. And um, the meeting was uh, certainly a challenging meeting. Um, in the meeting, I proposed a motion um, toward the end of the one hour time period. Um, essentially, um, the motion was recommending that the CSSJC, the HRC, which is the Human Rights Commission, and the A and the AHRA. Um, look at the incident um, and in collaboration with the DEI director, other appropriate staff and the town attorney um, or attorneys develop a recommendation for the town council on repair and reconciliation. Um, the motion was made and seconded by Councillor Walker and uh, we entered into brief discussion before uh, Councillor Henneke um, used a rule in the charter um, which allows a councillor to end a discussion. There are different interpretations of that rule. Um, and of course, um, as you may imagine, that created um, a, a lot of pain and um, a lot of concern for folks who were at the meeting. Um, it was very abrupt. Um, and uh, Lynn basically said, we will have to stop the discussion. What that did was um, push off the discussion and the motion that was before the council to the next regular or special meeting, which happened to be the next day. And it was a town council meeting, uh, a finance committee of the town council meeting. And unfortunately, um, that didn't give the CSSJC time to post a meeting. So they wouldn't have been able to participate um, as panelists in that meeting. So in the finance committee meeting, a motion was made after polling members of both of those groups being the town council and the CSSJC um, to move that discussion to next Tuesday. Uh, let me just get a date here. 
uh, November 1st in the evening. I believe it starts at six o'clock. Uh, so the conversation for us is um, one for me to inform you and let you know that I made a motion that evoked some presence of this body um, to collaborate with other bodies um, to make this recommendation. Um, since that time, I have uh, met with the council president and we are working on a way to turn that motion into something concrete to be brought to um, next Tuesday's meeting. I will be um, reaching out to the chairs of the CSSJC, as well as the HRC to um, bring them into that discussion that is happening now. Um, the other important piece of information, and then I'll um, step back here and be quiet, is over the weekend, um, we received, the town council received um, an additional piece of information from a parent um, that was uh, a parent of one of the youths, as well as uh, a parent that arrived on the scene. Um, and that information uh, sheds new light on the incident and uh, will very likely be a matter of discussion on the Tuesday, November 1st meeting. So I'm just gonna pause there um, and see if there are any um, just whatever questions, comments, any anything that might be arising right now. Okay. Um, so I will keep our committee abreast to what is um, going, you know, as we move forward with this process. Um, any information that I think would be relative um, to this for this committee to be aware of, I will of course ask Jennifer to distribute um, to the group. And if you have any questions um, or concerns, you know each of you know where and how to reach me. All right. All right. <laughs> um, so I see that we do have a couple audience members and I just want to open up that second public comment period um, to see if there are any members of the public who would like to make public comment. And um, I'm gonna uh, just, I'll read quickly the statement one more time. During public comment, the chair will recognize members of the public when called upon, please identify yourself by stating your name, pronouns, and address. Um, you're welcome to express your views for up to three minutes. And we will not engage in a dialogue, generally speaking. Um, sometimes there might be a question that can be clarified, um, but we will be listening very closely. So if you would like to make a public comment, please go ahead and use the raise hand function now. Okay not seeing any. Um, I wanted to check in with Jennifer about minutes. Um, Jennifer, where are we with minutes right now? Do you have a sense of that? Or could we report back on that next time? Yeah, no, there'll be some included. I was just been out and last week was my first week back after being out for a month. So I just ha wasn't able to like get them in time for the meetings. So I will we'll have them in for the well hopefully for the next meeting or Absolutely. at least an update on it yeah. <laughs> all right that would be great um and uh i think let me just um see something um jennifer could you make dr shabaz a co-host i think dr shabaz reminded me that he has a slide to share Oh, he should be able to share it, but I will make him a, anyways, but I'll make him co-host in the event that he can't. Yeah. Now it works. Thank you. Yeah. 
just trying to advance our work and to be able to approve before Thursday, since Thursday is coming up. This is language uh, from the land acknowledgement that the University of Massachusetts uses. I've modified it in a couple of portions. I can even cut this part here about how the lands of 80, 82 native nations west of the Mississippi were sold to provide resources that built the university. If we want that out, I can take that out just to shorten it uh, a little bit as well, since we're not, we're not UMass here, but UMass is a part of us. But at any rate, this is the language um, that, uh, here, I'll just go ahead and take that part out. Um, and if it meets with your approval, we can have this among the opening slides uh, on our screens that, you know, share to share and, and speak to it as well as a spoken uh, reference as well. Thank you very much, Dr. Shabazz. And um, since Ms. Bridges and Hala spoke to this previously, I want to defer to them um, to see if this um, is acceptable or if maybe Dr. Shabazz can offer this to Jennifer to send out and then um, Ms. Bridges and Hala could um, take a look at it and see if there's any anything to be added, changed, removed. Um, I think it's really important. I'm not quite sure about you know, the rest of the body of text, but at some point that we acknowledge that hopefully that, you know, creating reparations for the Black community will open the doors to creating reparations for the Indigenous people. I mean, I think that that's the piece that, um, and then folks can make the other comments towards the, the other um, acknowledgement pieces. Yeah, and I really I feel and, and 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 Ms. Bridges, I I don't I don't wish to put you on the spot. However, being that um, you um, are Indigenous yourself, I'm wondering if you would want to make um, that particular verbal comment, and then we could have this acknowledgement instead of reading it all, you know, just up on a slide. Um, so we have sort of both happening. And, and you can think about that if, if it's not, if you're not ready to answer that right now. Um, oh, you're muted, Ms. Bridges. If I don't, I know somebody else who will. <laughs> Great. But I can. I'll, I'll, um, if you can send that to me yes. so I can go over it and then I can get right back to you, like at least by tomorrow. Perfect. That all right? That's great. That's okay. great. Yeah. All Thank right. you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and Dr. Rhodes. So I, I was, uh, and when this came up, this uh, image came to my to my mind of a of a picture and uh, a uh, album that was put together by uh, my relatives of mine of our our family history. And it is a, a picture of my great great grandfather setting up on the wagon with my great great uh, grandmother, who was Cherokee, and was right after the Trail of Tears, in which there was forcible relocation of uh, tribes uh, from their lands uh, west. And it was a, a, a horrific. Uh, really almost ethnic cleansing. Uh, and when I think of, when I saw that picture, I thought, how is it that an African-American who was formerly just really freed as a slave, marries a Cherokee? I mean, it's an astonishing thing to me that that occurred, that that person, my great-great-grandfather and my great-great-grandmother came together at that particular time. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's sometimes I get overwhelmed when I think about it. I think, you know, these are, I would love to say to them, what was going through your mind? <laughs> you know, what was happening with you? What, what, but that's, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. 
sitting up on that wagon with his wife when everything around them was falling apart. Thank you for sharing that, Dr. Rhodes. <laughs> Oh, I'm so grateful for this committee. <laughs> this is just amazing. Um, I know you have to go, Ms. Bridges. Yep. Yeah. Is that why you were waving? Okay. <laughs> okay. I, um, I was just overwhelmed by, I was just overwhelmed by that. Same as you, you know how we get emotional. <laughs> I was, <laughs> that's what I was looking at you and I couldn't look at your face, but. <laughs> That's how I felt. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to see the picture sometime if you'd like to share it. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You brought me to tears. <laughs> we, we sometimes just forget how when people are in the midst of history, they don't realize that they're in the midst of history. Yeah. I wonder if there's some of that going on for us too, because we're in the midst of history. <laughs> All right. We might need uh, to pick up a bunch of box of tissues for Thursday as well. Um, <laughs> um, just so much heart energy. Um, so I am going to um, just say that I do not have any items that haven't been anticipated. Um, in terms of our next meeting, I would like for us, unless people have other suggestions, to spend the bulk of our time um, unpacking and sort of processing the Thursday listening session. So if Monday is a good time, I'm just look at the date here. Um, that will be Halloween. <laughs> if for those of you who celebrate, <laughs> come in your costumes <laughs> if you'd like. Um, and and yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and we'll do uh, our normal two two p.m. And I think Yvonne will be back, and ho hopefully Alexis will be too. And so, are there any other comments from members? Yes, Doctor Spaz. Um, I think also for that agenda if you wish uh, to keep us moving, uh, take up the who is owed, the eligibility question. I've uh, sent you some, some uh, a draft of some uh, thoughts I have on a position paper I've written on it. And uh, I suggest that might also be a um, good time well spent as well. Beautiful. Okay. And we can send that out um, to the full committee prior. Like if you've already sent it to me, I can um, send it to Jennifer to distribute and place in the packet essentially for our next meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Shabazz. All right. All right. Any other comments? Questions? Okay. I am going to adjourn. Uh, the meeting at 3.14 p.m. And we'll see you soon. We'll see you Thursday. Bye-bye. <laughs>